After our recent expose on Dr Zia, more women have come forward. Tonight, a nurse who used to work with the GP tells her side of the story. Absolutely horrific. It's still like I try to block it out because it's just upsetting. Try as she may, Vicky O'Brien can't hide this. Doesn't feel nice. Mm. Yeah. Raw. Mm. Yeah. So you're constantly having to wear your hair down and hope the wind doesn't blow. You just keep no. cutting and cutting up. It's cut up to about here above my ear. Alison Scott says the scars from her mini facelift still haven't disappeared after six months. He told me it'd improve over time and, yeah, it'd last ten years. Ten years? <laughs> I feel like I've aged ten years. Vicky and Alison are two more unhappy customers of GP, Dr Farouk Zia. So you're saying the treatment had no effect, it didn't work? It was all done for nothing, except for scarring. I've got one earlobe pulling down and one's going back, back up. It's just not even at all. I yeah, feel like I've punished myself now. We've now spoken to 16 women who say they're unhappy with the work performed by Dr Zia. Do you warn your patients of possible scarring? Yes, absolutely. I mean, they get uh, complete uh, uh, information before the surgery. When we confronted Dr Zia last week, he defended his practices. They say they were horrified by the scarring that they've ended I'm up with sir. months after the event. Some patients do have got unrealistic uh, uh, expectations. It's disgusting. <laughs> it really is. We cannot put up with this. This woman we'll call Fiona is a nurse who used to work in the same clinic as Dr Zia. I would question not necessarily the way he did it, but the information that the ladies were getting before and after, because it can be extremely frightening procedure to have done. Did you meet with Dr Zia before you had the surgery? No, no. I, he contacted me by phone um, and booked it in the next week, more or less. These photos are of Alison the day she had surgery. She says it was the first time she met Dr Zia in person and until then says no one told her she'd be awake during the procedure. I was shocked, yeah. And I don't know how many needles I've got in my face, but you could still feel every cut. So I could tell she was in pain, a lot of pain. Alison's partner, Chris, watched the whole thing. I, I, I wanted to get up and walk out because, yeah, the sound of the scissors cutting is something you'll never forget. It's four months since Vicky's surgery. She says the pain during the procedure was so bad, her body had a shocking reaction. When I profusely shook on the table and I couldn't stop, he, his words were nothing. He's, um, the nurse says, said, yeah, sometimes that happens. It was kind of stitch them up, way they go. Here's your sheet of paper, you'll be fine. But these patients weren't fine. Almost all of the women we've spoken to said they suffered infections. So I felt very, very, very unwell. I couldn't get out of bed. It would have been five, six days. Alison says she also battled infections and her partner Chris contacted Dr Zia for help, sending the GP photos of her inflamed scarring, but they were assured Alison was healing well. He did get back to us on a text message. I think I spoke to him once also. Infections are part of everyday life. It can happen. You need to be forewarned and how to recognise an infection What's the best thing you can do if you do get an infection? Who to contact? Where to go? This woman asked us to show what happened to her face after Dr Zia did a mini facelift. After 10 days, she says, infection set in and soon she developed an opening in her skin under her ear. The scarring's still bad after 28 days and still obvious after three months. On Facebook, these ads promote Dr Zia's signature mini facelift, saying it lasts for around 10 years, and most incisions are barely detectable by around three months after the procedure. The thing is that you can't make every single person happy. But they say they didn't get what they were promised or expected. Some people have got more expectations, and they just uh, think that they are going to get different results altogether. Both Alison and Vicky also had surgery on their eyelids and neither were happy with the outcome. 
I had to massage them, stretch them because I couldn't open this eye properly. It was too tight. I just wanted to um, have this lifted, but if anything now, it's done the opposite. It feels like it's pulling down, same with my face. You've got 16 ladies who have come to you. I'm very sad that you've got 16. Fiona left the clinic and claims Dr Zia's approach to patient care was one of the reasons. We put a number of questions to Dr Zia about these latest allegations. In a statement to a current affair, he says... Patients participate in initial and pre-procedure consultations and are told of known complications of risks, including scarring. Patients acknowledge the advice received by signing an acknowledgement and consent form. All patients are provided with aftercare. Dr Zia says some people have unreal expectations. What would you say to him? Would he like that done to him and come out like this? <laughs> I'd just like my face back. And Dr Zia says if a patient has an issue, he'll undertake an assessment which may include surgical treatment free of charge. Alison's been offered a consultation but isn't taking up the offer. The doctor's statement is on our website.